Alright, hello everybody. Welcome back to the How to Program with Java blog. Uh, today's Java tutorial will be on debugging, as promised. Uh, debugging is a really helpful uh, way to figure out if you have any bugs in your program, figure out where they're coming from, and, uh, and give you a better idea of how you can go about fixing them. Um, I use this you know, every day at my job. It's something that every single programmer needs to know how to do and, and really know how to do well. So um, I'm going to teach you uh, how it is that I go about using the debugger in Spring STS um, in my daily job. That way you can uh, hit the ground running and, uh, and figure out your own bugs if you happen to, to create them in, in your programs. So uh, here I have a little test, uh, test program that you might have seen in my last post uh, about exceptions. Um, slightly modified, but uh, we'll get the uh, the, the basic uh, gist of, of what's going on here. Um, so in our our uh, runnable class uh, has our main method uh, where we instantiate uh, a new file IO Java class that we've created here, file IO Java. Um, it will instantiate it with the uh, constructor that uses a string as an input. So if you go to file IO, we'll see that we have a public file IO, which is the constructor, and it takes a string as a, uh, a parameter. So, uh, we know this is what's going to be called. So, in order to debug, um, there's two things you need to do. First one is set up an actual debug uh, breakpoint, uh, and that's this little blue guy here. Um, you can actually double click right there, and you see it goes away, or double click on the line there, and it comes back. Uh, I think you can even right click on it and you can um, uh, toggle it on and off, same kind of thing. I mean it's uh, it's your own your own choice, your own preference. I prefer to double click but I mean it's up to you. Um, also I put another one in my file IO um, here on line 16. Uh, why did I choose line 16? Well you try to double click on line 13 and it won't let you because you can't put a breakpoint on uh, a line where you're just uh, declaring a variable. Um, don't ask me why, I should, probably should know the answer, but it's not really that important at this point. Uh, so I just put my uh, breakpoint here on the on this line in, uh, in the try block. So that's uh, the first thing you need to know. The second thing you need to know is how to start the program in debug mode. So you're all familiar with uh, the main class and you right click on it and you say run as uh, Java application. But this time, instead of using the run as Java application, we're going to choose debug as uh, Java application. So when I click on Java application under debug as and let it run, it switches into a different perspective. This is called the debug perspective, which you'll see over here, debug perspective. Um, really, this is just a different view of your code uh, that allows you to better um, debug. So it's just a, an easier way to, to go about debugging. It shows you your variables over here and uh, any threads that your your program may be running in or, or rather paused in here, um, as well as your regular console output that you're used to at the bottom. So as you can see, we ran our program in debug mode and we have now a highlighted green line which indicates that um, the Java code is actually paused and waiting to execute uh, this line of code. So, okay, that's cool. Um, how do we actually tell it to execute that line of code? Well, up here is our, um, I guess, controls that allow us to control the flow of our debug. So, um, here we just have the resume button, so if I click this, it will essentially run the code um, until either it hits another breakpoint or until the execution completes. Um, terminate, that's pretty self-explanatory. It'll just stop the, uh, the debug mode and it'll actually terminate the program um, right where you are. So it won't actually execute any more code. It'll just stop, exit, nothing more will happen. Um, now here we have step into. Now this one I don't use too frequently um, because sometimes uh, you'll get into 
the nitty gritty code uh, of Java. You'll get into the um, the actual Java class files. Um, I could probably show you what what that's like, but I don't want to do it just yet. Um, I use it sparingly. Typically, I use step over, which means uh, execute this line of code and just move on to the next line. Um, so if I do that now, if I click step over, what it's going to do is execute this entire line of code, which will in turn instantiate this class. Now, upon instantiation of this class, the code will have to go into the constructor of the file IO class and execute the code inside of the constructor. Well, that's exactly what we looked at over here in the file IO. This public file IO is the constructor, and this uh, code here is everything that's inside of that um, uh, constructor. Since we've put a breakpoint right here at line 16, uh, the code should stop at line 16. So let's see if that's what actually happens. Let's go back to our uh, line here. I'm going to click on step over, and there you go. So now the code has, has uh, executed the instantiation of our file IO constructor. It's declared our you know buffer reader and it's executed the first part of the try block and now we're sitting and waiting to instantiate a buffered reader uh, and then instantiate a, a file reader with the file name that we're passing in. So in debug mode uh, a, a real uh, bonus here is that we can hover over our variables and it'll actually show us uh, what the value of that variable is. Uh, let me just bring that up. There you go. So we set the value of the variable based on the parameter that we passed in to this constructor, uh, which we saw back in the my program. So I actually hard coded it as C drive slash a file dot txt. So I'm going to go ahead and step over this line and something interesting will happen. And let's see what, what happens. So let's step over and you would have expected to go to this next line but instead it jumped into our catch block now why did it do that well that's because right now in my current configuration uh, I don't have a file dot txt uh, stored in the C drive at all there this file doesn't exist so what happens well it's gonna throw an exception so Java will throw an exception and since we have uh, this line wrapped inside of our try block it will then go into the catch block and it will catch the file not found exception. Um, so we have a file not found exception that we've actually assigned uh, to a variable name of E. And again, like I said, in debug mode, you can hover over your variables and it'll show you everything there is to know about that uh, particular variable. So we see that it's a file not found exception. We see a detail message saying C drive slash A file. The system cannot find the file specified and we have a cause and all that stuff. Um, so that's just, it's helpful to know exactly where the, the, the problem came from. And, uh, and this line here, e.print stack trace, will just output the, um, all the pertinent information about the error into our console. So if I step over this guy, like so, you'll see at the bottom here, now we have all of this information regarding our exception. So really handy stuff the uh, the debugger so now I'll just say resume and let it execute uh, the rest of the code so now the code flows out uh, into completion and you see now that the thread is terminated and we're done um, so this is a very simple example of, of how to debug but it's it's such a powerful tool and I, I can't you know overstate how important it is to know how to use the debugger uh, now real quick before we finish here I just want to show you what the step into does. So I'm going to go back and do the exact same thing as I did before. Right click on the main method, go to debug as, and debug it as a Java application. So we have our uh, breakpoint here set for the first line as, as uh, we had before. And instead I'm going to go into the step into, and you'll see what happens when I click on this. We've now gone into a class loader dot class file, which is part of the Java Lang package. Um, not very helpful to us. This is, you know, code I guess written by the people who made Java, and and you know the the 
possibility of their code breaking is very slim. <laughs> uh, so it, it's it gets a really it gets really complicated. And if you keep stepping in into these classes, I mean it it just comes to a point where I, you know I don't even have this uh, this um, Java or these Java docs loaded. So you know I don't have the Sun dot miscellaneous package on my uh, computer that it can uh, attach to. So uh, this is what I get. So. I just wanted to show you how that is not always the greatest thing unless you know exactly where you're going to be stepping into um, and if you know exactly where it's going to be then it becomes helpful um, like I said generally not helpful when it's going to be the core Java code so let me just let this resume out and uh, now once we let it run through it will have instantiated our file IO class and now we're back to familiar territory um, which we've already seen so um, I'll let that run through and we get the same result. So if I were to add this file to uh, the right location, hopefully we'll see something different in the code. So let me just go on to my uh, desktop here. I just renamed it to text2 and so I'll rename it to text and say yes and I'll rerun the program in debug mode. So right click here, debug as, Java application, I'm going to either, uh, I could say step over or resume, doesn't really matter because I have that second breakpoint. Um, if I resume, I get here. So now, the file should exist there. So let me step over this one. And there you go. So now, if we hover over our buffered reader, uh, we have some stuff. And we're able to uh, keep on stepping over. Now we get into our while loop, and you'll see that it goes to the first system.out with the line that's been read from the file which is this is the line one from file and uh, we say step over again and we'll see some console output so this is very uh, a very good way to understand how your code flows um, very useful I love it great way to learn how Java works okay great so that brings us to the end of our little tutorial here um, please if you can Take some time to click our uh, share buttons on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, then follow my link back to my uh, how to program with Java.com website. If you're on my website, then please, by all means, share. Um, I really appreciate it, and I thank you guys very much. And I uh, can't wait to see you next time. Take care.